Welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Welcome to the next episode of the Pit Lane Parlay experience with Harding Steinbrenner Racing. We are joined by Alex Workman. Uh, Alex's official title, he's going to go by Apprentice, but I know he does a, a bunch of things uh, here with Harding Steinbrenner. So, Alex, to start with, you know, for everybody listening, what are all your responsibilities with Harding Steinbrenner? And then to the casual fan, what does that mean? Uh, well, my primary responsibility right now is that I... I prepare the tires for the race. Um, every time we get off, every time we, sh- we show up here, uh, it's my job to go ahead and purchase tires, make sure that there's pure nitrogen tires, make sure the tires are at the recommended cold pressures that the engineers give me. Uh, the idea is to make sure that the tires, uh, when they get hot on the track, that they go to the exact pressures that the engineers want them to be, maximize grip. So uh, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Um, for those who don't know at home, Iowa is incredibly hot. If you just haven't been tuned into social media this weekend, everybody is uh, talking about it on social media for those of us who are here. With the tires and everything, does it add a curveball at all, given how hot it is this weekend? Uh, yeah, um, but uh, they account for it pretty well. Uh, but the idea is typically is that we want the tires to... If, we're, if it's hotter outside, it actually gets a lot closer to on-track temperature, so it actually does make it a little bit more easy, at least for the tire guy, to predict when it's, where the tires are going to come in. As far as how much the rubber will actually last, that's not really what I know much about. I'll admit that. What are the tires? I, I know everybody did some long runs today. Um, what are the tires looking like when they're coming off the car, and and um, what, what kind of... Uh, input do you give to the tire guys from what you see tires so far have not looked bad i mean compared to texas where you get a lot of blisters which are basically air pockets that build up because the rubber gets so hot it boils and then the air pockets will actually blister punch out from underneath the rubber uh, they actually they're actually coming off with pretty even wear uh, they look pretty clean um, i don't see uh, any static mount of shredding or anything like that So, let me see here. Colton just qualified 11th, which, uh, you know, is pretty solid for probably his first race in over 100-degree temperatures. Uh, was that what, what you guys as a team expected? Were you expecting more? And, uh, you know, what's, what's your outlook for tomorrow night during the race? Uh, me, personally, uh, what I expect... Uh, Colton's usually good enough to, to make it right around the top 10, almost always. Uh, but we are a new team, so there's still some stuff to figure out coming along with the car. But uh, as far as our success this year, we won a race this year. Uh, we even got a pole position this year. We're very consistently in the top six in qualifying. So as far as figuring out the car, we're doing a pretty good job at that this year. So, you know, touching on that, before uh, St. Pete started, we, we talked to uh, both George Steinbrenner and, I think, Colton, uh, and they were pretty tempered in their expectations. Obviously, going into your first you know, full season as a, as a new team, you're trying not to get too far ahead of yourself, even with a driver like Colton. You won a race, you got the pole, you qualify in the top in the fast six almost every road and street course does that you know is it hard to not raise your own internal expectations as the season goes on uh my answer to that is it'd be a good thing if you did um to be competitive especially in indycar one thing that i've learned the guys have taught me uh, like i said i'm still pretty new to this series um well fairly new to racing in general. I've only done like yeah. short track stuff with my pals on the weekends before I really decided to uh, go at it full time. Uh, there's a lot of preparation. You know, there's a lot of practice and there's a lot more to think about when you're really trying to run at the front. And uh, that's that's just kind of a lesson that you learn coming, coming to when you go to a higher level competition in general. That's what you have to learn. You have to understand it. 
the work isn't at the track, you know, it's at the shop, and it's consistency. Are you consistently doing better? Are you consistently prepared? And that's just what it's going to take, and there's going to be some curveballs at you. And as long as you combine the intensity with consistent work, sooner or later you're going to get some good sure. results. So uh, speaking of Colton, um, what's it like been working with uh, Colton? Is a pretty cool guy. Any any cool or funny stories you got to share? Uh, well, you know he really likes Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, Halloween time he he dressed up as Michael Myers, and uh, yeah, he got me pretty good. Uh, when I went to load some body work parts up into the truck, he was up there and he popped out with a Michael Myers mask and a knife. And then Do we I, have any video of that? Actually, I believe there is video of it somewhere. Uh, <laughs> We're going to have to work on that yeah. one. Um, as far as their attitudes go, uh, him and George Steinbrenner both are they're very down to earth. Uh, they have a very mature personality. Um, when you meet and talk to them, and you guys already have talked to them, you kind of come to realize is, uh, you know, they're not that full of themselves. They're very aware, and they're very willing to work hard. Um, Colton, especially, uh, even he, we've had some mishaps this season, uh, but he doesn't seem to give up on it. He doesn't lose his cool. Uh, he keeps a good attitude all the time, and that just goes back to consistently, to consistency. So, you talk about going back to the shop and everything, and you know, compared to like some other sports and stuff. I mean, you guys are here and you're the shop. How hard is uh, this, you know, stretch we're going through here with, you know, three different uh, tracks, three distinctively different tracks, and, and you know, how, how do you guys handle this three-week stretch? It goes back to preparation. Um, uh, that's a big part of being competitive in this series is being organized. Um, you know, if you're not organized, you'll start to miss all those little mistakes. Those add up, those show up on the track. Um, one of my shop responsibilities uh, is that I kind of keep track of a lot of the body. I help the bodywork guy keep track of all the bodywork parts. Uh, so, at the beginning of the season, uh, I organize, you know, I separate all speedway parts, I separate the road course parts, and uh, it's my responsibility is to make sure they make it on the truck every time. So, having a team owner in George Dyenbrenner that's, uh, I don't know, 22 or 23, um, you know, being younger than the three of us and pro- possibly close to your age, what's that like? Because he's such, he's such a smart guy and he's so well-spoken. Uh, did it kind of surprise you at first that he's, you know, s- s- you know, despite being a young guy, is you know, more mature than probably a lot of people we were, were walking by this weekend? Yeah, it really, it really does. Um, I sure as heck wasn't at his age. You know, I'm 30 now, and uh, a lot of people don't really consider me mature. So, uh, definitely not. Uh, it's impressive how they are in general. You know, like you said, they're well spoken. Um, when I first met Colton, first thing he did is came up and shake my hand and introduced himself. Uh, another thing they're really good about is they come around and thank the guys for all their hard work. They really let you know that you know we're in this together, and they don't seem to forget that. Um, and they're not—they're uh, not too good for things, you know. Some of, some of the guys around them, um, I believe his stepdad wants to even help me run some tires back from the pits. Uh, that right there is when you're working with them, you kind of know that they want to help out. You know, they want—they want this team to do well. They're very dedicated. And that's a good thing to know. I love it, and yes, yeah, similar to you, uh, I'm pretty sure nobody would call me immature, uh, especially if you heard our Patreon episode uh, from from mid year last year. Uh, Is that the alcohol one? Yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about that anymore. Uh, as far as just either as a mechanic or as, as a fan of racing, is there a track on the IndyCar schedule that you really enjoy going to? Middle Ohio is still my favorite. I'm from Ohio. Uh, that's where I, that was one of the races I grew up going to. Besides Indianapolis 500, 
Uh, so I just have a lot of good memories there, and it's a good chance to see my family. And, um, it's really just really cool to be there as a kid, and now that I'm actually there in those paddocks, you know, wearing a fire suit, uh, working on working for an IndyCar team, that just really reminds me of uh, how far I really came. So, you know, you mentioned uh, a little while ago, kind of, you know, prior to IndyCar, just kind of work in the short track scene on the weekends. Uh, what, you know, describe your uh, your racing roots for, for everybody listening. Uh, I didn't really have a real thick racing background. Um, my dad was a barbecue chef. Uh, my mom was a medical administrator. Um, and I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, where everybody lives for football. Uh, I've always been a gearhead my whole life. Uh, I spent five years in the dealership as a technician. Uh, one in the winter of 2017, I was just kind of fed up, so I went down to, I took a break because winter time was getting a little harsh. And I went with my brother to St. Pete, and we bought some paddock passes, and that's when uh, I decided to, you know, dress up a little bit, maybe you know, maybe put on a polo because it's pretty hot down there. We we'll walked down there with some resumes. And I shook some hand, asked some good questions, uh, made some good connections. Um, asked mostly just asked like, what does it take to get into racing? Yeah. And I took, I asked those guys the advice. I followed that advice. Um, when I got back, uh, I pounded the pavement a little bit. I passed out the resumes to a few different teams, a few drag racing teams around Indianapolis. Um, and by April, uh, I got an offer to be a dampers assistant for uh, Harding Racing with Gabby Chavez last year. And uh, I got to work with a dampers engineer, Cooper King, who was a really cool guy. He knew a lot, and he was really cool about teaching me the racing way, uh, particularly the organization part of it, which is really in-depth. Uh, that's all it took, really, is... And there's a few guys in the paddock that met me that day at St. Pete, and they were pretty surprised to see me so soon in another uniform. Uh, but they've been pretty cool about it, and everybody around the paddock's been pretty encouraging. I think everybody sitting here is kind of the same way, or the paddock. A lot of people in the paddock are same same way. We grew up on one side of the fence, you know, watching all the stuff, and now we're on the other side of it. I mean, just when you really sit and give yourself time to think about it, how cool is that? Yeah, it's, that's one thing is, you know, this, it gets stressful sometimes. And, uh, you know, as as an apprentice around here, you know, I bounce around a lot. You know, it's, uh, you know, they, they, they're showing me how to do tires. It's it's something that uh, I get, they got me working with Foggy, who's our real tire guy. Yeah. Uh, and he's also our truck driver, and he knows tires like nobody's business. Um, and it's really, it's really great to work with him, but um, it's just... You know, not being too good to do anything else. You know, I help him get lunch, and you got to be able to, you know, wipe stuff down, and keep things clean, and, and you know. So, as far as being a mechanic in IndyCar, what is maybe one or two things most fans at home doesn't realize or don't realize what goes into being a mechanic full time in IndyCar? It it goes back to organization. At least for me, that was my biggest learning curve. Um, I've always worked on cars and stuff, but the way the way you have to be organized here, the way you have to be prepared from the shop, you have to make sure that you bring all the right stuff, uh, that you have all the right spare parts, and also you want to be prepared. You know, you want to know exactly how to do something done so you can do it efficiently. You can't always be figuring things out on the fly. Uh, it looks like you know when they do pit stops or when they're doing making those changes on pit lane, it looks like they're just wrenching away on the car, but. Um, those guys have done those things a thousand times by now and they know exactly how to do it and there's an exact procedure and that's what you really got to learn more than anything is the procedure and you got to be able to sync with with everyone else you know like what seems like a one person job a, a, uh, it could be a three person job if, if it would help you get that much faster you just got to learn how to sync with people and work as a team so when you put all that stuff together and you win like you did earlier this year, uh, just what kind of satisfaction is that for for you know somebody who crews the car? You know, you spend a lot of late nights 
uh, at the shop. Um, there's there's a lot of headaches involved. You know, something you get a new part, it doesn't quite fit, so then you got to file it together. And we got to meet a lot of deadlines. You know, the truck has to be loaded by a certain time. Um, and it goes back to all that you know, all that preparation, all that knowledge, all that skill, all the all the little goofy things that these guys try to add up. You put together a good car, one that makes it to the end of the race, and then. And just let you know that, you know, you did do a good job. You helped make this happen. So we'll wrap it up with uh, one last question here. Uh, and then following this interview, you'll be able to hear um, Mike Knapp speak to Colton briefly uh, on pit lane post-qualifying. Again, Alex, thanks for joining us. Uh, you mentioned Mid-Ohio is one track you're most excited to go to, um, you know, obviously being from Ohio. So one track on the rest of the schedule that you're maybe most uh, concerned about from a, from a tire perspective? Uh, probably Laguna Seca, um, just because I don't know what Firestone is going to want us to do yeah. uh, as far as you know how many tires they're going to give us. Um, and since we haven't really been there in a while, uh, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot to figure out on the fly. So. Do you know if you'll have uh, any sort of testing there before the end of September? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty standard. Most teams are going to be testing uh, probably pretty pretty close towards the race. Cool. Well, thanks very much, man, for joining us. We wish you and the team the best of luck this weekend, and uh, we'll see you out at the track. Thanks, guys. All right. I'll talk to I don't think I'd mind it either way. Uh, it would get a lot faster if they repaved it, because the bumps do kind of limit the setup of the car. We are we are limited through three and four with the uh, the patches that they have there on touching, so we would go quite a bit quicker if they did repave it. But for me, it's it's just the challenge of IndyCar coming to all these different places and, and having all these different tarmacs and everything's different. And we don't go to one track that's the same as the other. Um, whether it be short ovals or permanent road courses, they're all quite different in their own ways. But um, yeah, I don't I, I, I don't see a need to be repaved. But if they would, I wouldn't be complaining. So about halfway through qualifying here, and uh, are you surprised or are you happy with your qualifying effort? Or? I'm actually surprised now because it seems like a lot of guys aren't going that much quicker. Um, you know, we were we were very bad this morning. Um, I was still learning the track, but I don't think uh, we had a great car either. Um, we made a big step up. We, we went a little loose uh, in qualifying, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing here to go a little loose in qualifying. It's over the stint that you, you don't want to go loose. So uh, working on the race car now, focus on that. We have night practice tonight. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, what are you looking to accomplish tonight? Uh, just get the race car in balance. Um, learn what it's like to run around with a full tank of fuel and uh, run behind cars. Um, there's a lot of stuff we can learn from the car side, but there's also a lot of stuff we can learn from, for me, for driving perspective. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be hectic. I think uh, I think the sun's going to be on our eyes as well, which isn't going to be too nice, but it's what it is. I know you've raced here before, lights and, and uh, stuff like that, but how much different is it when... Uh, uh, you know, you've got this. You've got the car with road ho horsepower, road trim. It's, and it's different because we're going a lot faster. The power to downforce ratio is different than the lights car. So, uh, yeah, we are. It, it is quite different uh, than the lights car, even though uh, you know they're similar most places. Here's one place that they're not similar at all. It's it's flat in the lights car, even in the race. And and here, of course, we're lifted and qualifying quite massively. So. Uh, yeah, it, like I said, tonight we'll all be about learning, and, and hopefully I can learn the best. I'm sure seeing all the races uh, on TV over the years, are you really excited to uh, to finally be in one? Yeah. Here, here at Iowa? No, yeah, it's, uh, this is always a pretty jam-packed race. Uh, I like that they moved it to, uh, to the night format. I think that's going to be good, um, and it will make it interesting. Um, even though I don't think it's going to be completely dark starting it at 6.15, but it'll still be fun. Is this going to be more physically demanding than anything you've experienced this year or Gosman? 